All right, gentlemen, uh, we will do one review exercise on bank reconciliation exercise, right? We've covered a few before, but uh, for the purpose of revising for the final exam, I'm going to go over one more exercise that covers bank reconciliation. The exercise that we're going to do is exercise 8-11, which is one of the uh, homework exercises that you have on your exercise list, okay? So exercise 8-11 says uh, the following information pertains to Crane Video Company. And then they're giving you six points, right? And the requirements are two of them. There's two requirements. A, prepare bank reconciliation at July 31st. B, generalize the adjusting entries at July 31st on the books of Crane Video Company. Now, for the purpose of uh, this exercise, we are not going to go over the second requirement, we're just going to do the bank reconciliation. All right. So exercise 8-11, right? Going to put a line here, as always, and put the company information and the records information here at the top, as usual. Okay. So this is for a company called Crane video company and this is a bank conciliation statement okay and the record is done done on July um, I I'm gonna put a year because we are we were not given the actual year. We're just given the month and the day. All right. So this is a crane video company bank reconciliation as on July 31st. Now remember, as we said, we always start with the uh, cash balances. So we have two things or two balances that we need to make sure that they equal each other. Okay. We have the cash balance per bank statement and we have the cash balance per books. Okay, so the first thing that you always do is start with these two. Here I'll put cash balance as per bank statement. Let's see what was it in the question. It says cash balance per bank on July 31st is 7,263. Okay, so I'll put that number down here, 7,263. Right. We format this as currencies with non instrument texts. And then leave a space or leave a gap as much as you want. Make sure it's big enough. Okay. And then record the cash balance per books. And it was given to us in the question here. Let's say on number three, cash balance per cash balance per books on July 31st was 7,284. 7,284 dollars. Okay. So that's the first step. So what's going on here? What's going on is that on this day, on July 31st, we look at our bank statement. We look at the bank statement. We look at the cash 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 statement. We can happen due to multiple reasons. It could happen due to errors by the bank or errors by our accountants, and it could happen due to time lags or checks that are uh, not accepted or bounce or not sufficient fund, uh, checks and, and so on. So there are multiple reasons that could cause for the balance of the uh, bank statement to be different from the balance of our books. Sorry, I have a typo here. Fix it. All right. So let's see the points that are given to us. 
So number one, we already covered cash balance per bank, July 31st, 7,263. That's fine. We've already put that down. Number two, July bank service charge not recorded by the depositor. Okay. So that means this amount that was, uh, that we have deposited in our bank, okay, for, uh, or to pay for a bank charge uh, that was not recorded by us, by our accountant, okay? So we need to deduct that amount from our books. We need to record that amount and subtract it from our bank total, right? Now remember, before we do that, for each of these two, there might be things that we're going to add and things that we may be going to subtract. Okay. So add and this or subtract. Okay. Now, in the one in number two here, which is a bank service charge, يعني رسوم خدمات بنكية. قالنا إيش؟ it was not recorded by the depositor. يعني إحنا كمودعين ما سجلناه. فهذه وين تروح مفروض إيش؟ Where should we put it? Of course, we did not record it, so the mistake is in our side, right? In our books. Okay. These are service charges, or bank service charges. Do we add them to our balance or subtract them, subtract them from our balance? Of course, we what? We subtract them from our balance, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come here and just write bank service charge. Okay, and how much it was? It was $28. Typically, in Excel, what I like to do is just put these in brackets to show that this is a minus and not. So at the end, I can just add everything together instead of adding and, and subtracting. All right, so that's number one, done, and number two, done. Number three, we already used, which is the cash balance per books. We already written here. So number three is also done. Number four says deposits in transit. July 31st was 1,300. What do we mean by deposits in transit? We mean that these are the, uh, the deposits or the amounts of money that we deposited into our bank account, but they are not reflected in our bank statement yet. Okay? يعني ما أدري ممكن تجرب أنت اليوم مثلاً تروح عند الصرافة وتودع مبلغ خلينا نفترض 100 ريال ومباشرة تفتح تطبيق البنك في الجوال وتطلع كشف الحساب. أغلب الظن ما راح تظهر عندك المية هذه ليه؟ لأنه when you make a deposit there is always a time lag or a time difference between the time you actually deposit the money and the time that the, the amount or that money appears on your bank statement okay طيب إحنا ودعنا المبلغ هذا وأكيد إنه أوردي سجلناه في سجلاتنا لكن ما هو ظاهر في كشف حساب البنكي فإيش نسوي فيه؟ راح نعدله في كشف حساب البنكي ولا في سجلاتنا؟ لا طبعا في كشف حساب البنكي طيب السؤال الثاني هل راح نضيفه على رصيد كشف حساب بنكي ولا نخصمه من كشف حساب بنكي؟ راح نضيفه طبعا لان هذا مبلغ احنا اودعناه في حسابنا فالمفروض انه يزيد رصيدنا البنكي، right؟ So it should increase our uh, balance per bank statement, right؟ So here we'll come here and just record deposits in transit. طبعا يا شباب يعني الحالات اللي راح تجيك هي حالات محدوده فاما انك تحفظها او تحللها تحليل زي ما انا قاعد اسوي معك الان اوكي يعني لازم تعرف مثلا انه ديبوزيتس ان ترانزيت هذه دائما تجي هنا دائما نعدلها في البنك ستيتمنت ونعدلها بالاضافه وليس بالخصم اول رايت وات واز ذا اماونت ات واز هاو ماتش 1300 اوكي نمبر 4 also done نمبر 5 Bank collected $700 notes for Crane in July, plus interest $36, list fee $20. The collection has not been recorded by Crane, and no interest has been accrued. Similar to what we mentioned before. So this is a note that is uh, uh, that should be paid to our company. The customer or the 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 uh, the person who owes this amount, instead of coming and giving us that amount, he went in to our uh, bank and he deposited the payments fully in the bank directly. So it's showing on the bank balance, 
but it's not showing on our records because we did not record yet that we have received this amount or we do not know that the bank have collected this amount for us yet. We only know after we see it on the bank statement, right? So where do we adjust for this? Of course, we adjust for this in our books. Do we add it on our books or subtract it? Of course, we add it because this is an amount that is deserved to us and it was collected by the bank for us. It was added on our account, right? So here, <clears throat> we're gonna write collection of a note receivable. Okay, we need to do a little bit of calculation for this one, right? Because there are two amounts that should be added to our account and one amount that should be subtracted, okay? قيمة سداد النوت رسيفبل زائد الفوائد اللي عليها هذه تضاف لحسابنا ناقص البنك فيز أو الرسوم البنكية راح تنخصم من هذه القيمة إذا إيش راح نسوي راح نقول 700 dollars okay plus the interest which is 36 dollars minus the bank service fee or the bank collection fee which is 20 dollars This is how we're going to calculate it. So I'm just going to come here and say 700 plus 36 minus 20. That will give us $716. Okay? So that's number five also done. All right? Last one. Number six says outstanding checks on July 31st was 591. Okay? Outstanding checks was 591 right so these for these checks or outstanding checks always come where here we adjusted on the bank statement and we subtracted from our bank account or our balance per bank statement right so i'm just going to come here and say bank outstanding checks or outstanding checks And the amount was 591, right? That's it. That's the six points. The last tip that we're going to do, we're going to make the adjusted balance per bank statement and the, or calculate the adjusted balance per bank statement and the adjusted balance per books, okay? So I'm going to come here to the last line, <coughs> excuse me, and just say, Adjusted balance per bank statement. And here we're going to calculate the adjusted balance per books. Okay. The line here, of course, and another line here for the total uh, sorry just make it a closing line now we're gonna see sorry this one also i've got to put it in brackets because we subtract this amount Uh, also, let me delete some of these empty spaces first. Just to keep my statements organized. I'm going to make this a little bit bold as well. Okay, here some of these amounts, and here some of these amounts. Our goal is for these two values or two amounts to equal each other. So let's see if we've done this correctly. There we go. As you can see, we got this right on. 
So the adjusted balances are now, are now equal to each other. $7,972 per bank statement and per books. Okay, Shabam. So this is pretty much it, or this is pretty much how you do a bank reconciliation. You start with two balances that are not equal to each other, different from each other. You get some pieces of information that you can use to adjust the balance here at the top per bank statement and to adjust the balance per books. And your goal is to get the adjusted balances to be equal to each other. All right, so that was requirement A of exercise 8-11. Hope you found this useful.